Hi everyone, I'm Casey Christopheris. I'm sitting here with Scott Cahill. Um, we're going to talk about the Oroville uh, Dam and uh, p specifically a article written by the Sacramento Bee in last week's uh, newspaper. Sure, I, most, most of the people that see this are going to know who I am. I'm uh, a dam safety guy. I've been for many, many years, run companies that repair dams over mostly the eastern United States. Uh, and I've commented a lot on the Oroville Dam. I'm very opinionated about the uh, evolution of repair of the Oroville Dam. The Sacramento Bee article that you read is uh, discussing hairline cracks in the surface of the concrete slabs. And in fact, Dr. B, who I have great respect for, uh, commented on it and, and was concerned about it. There are a couple of issues with cracking of the surface of a dam, uh, any concrete structure. In, in this case, it's the sluiceway base slab of the Oroville Dam principal spillway. And it's very frustrating. It's frustrating for the people who live there. It should be frustrating for the people who paid the money to have the dam repaired after it failed in such a tragic way. And, uh, and now there's, there's this question that's manifested. A number of the people who, who listen to my uh, blogs, who read my blogs, who uh, follow me on Facebook and LinkedIn have asked me to comment on this. And um, so I, I too read the article. And I can't tell from the article what the truth is. And we cannot believe the Department of Water Resources because they've misled us so many times. So that's just the reality of this, in my opinion. I know that sounds harsh, but that's what I truly believe. And I think that's what truly many people believe. There's a normal process of concrete curing. People say sometimes concrete dries. Concrete does not dry. In fact, if it dries, it won't cure. Concrete cures, it's a chemical process that uh, causes the Portland particles within the concrete to actually grow fine cilia, which interconnect one with the other and bind the concrete together. This is the process of hydration, which is what causes concrete to get hard. During this process, the only tensile strength, the pulling apart strength that concrete attains is from the interlocking of the cilia of the Portland particles as the curing takes place. Concrete is not a particularly good product for, for tensile strength like steel and a number of other things are. And in fact, that is why a concrete slab will have steel in it in the uh, reinforcing rods or welded wire mesh is because steel is much better at this tensile or pulling apart strength than is concrete. Concrete is good for compressive strength only. This is my dog Spike. <laughs> Spike, this is the world. Be During this process, the water is actually taken into the chemical process of hydration, hence, hence the term hydration. And when it does, that reduces the overall volume. And when the, the volume is reduced, <clears throat> then it becomes smaller. And that shrinkage is normal in concrete. That often produces fine cracks. It's exacerbated if the concrete is hot. This right. concrete was, was placed during very hot time. So, that might be the situation with this concrete. I believe it probably is. It probably wasn't kept cool enough during the process of hydration, which produces heat as, as the process takes place. So you have the concrete producing heat, and then you have the ambient temperature outside adding to the heat of the drying, which could lead to or did cause these surface cracks. Exactly, exactly. And, and off camera before we talked about um, you called it the, the cream on the surface right. of the concrete yeah. where, where as you finish concrete the aggregate acts as a heat sink so that 
The aggregate is at ambient temperatures, hopefully somewhat below that in a situation like this. I know they used ice to keep the concrete cool before it was placed, but once it's placed, it has that, that thermic reaction which produces heat chemically as well as the ambient temperature. The surface of the concrete, just at the very top, has very little aggregate because in the finishing of the concrete, the aggregate has been, has been finished down into the mass of the concrete. This leaves the cream on the top, just a thin layer, which has only fines. It has Portland and sand and very little aggregate of any size. Therefore, the total mass of aggregate that can act as a heat sink is less. And exacerbating that, of course, is the sunlight solar heat gain to that topmost layer. Right. So right. it gets hotter than, than the mass within the centroid of the, of the slab when the mass of the aggregate doesn't overcome that, that reaction. So the top part of that slab can get quite hot. I'm sure that that's what happened here. Now the cracking that's caused by that is called crazing or alligatoring. Very fine cracks and many of them. I'm imagining, although I haven't seen detailed pictures, and it's very hard to show in a picture, that that's what happened here. Part of that is perfectly normal. The reality of the existence of alligatoring in a concrete slab is that the surface of that slab will prematurely fail. These areas that are alligatored, these tiny cracks, will allow just a little bit of seepage of water in there. During the day, the water will heat up, it will <coughs> vaporize. That water vapor will present a pressure within the structure of the surface of the concrete, and it'll begin to spall. It'll begin to release under those pressures from the aggregate surface and from itself across the lines of those fractures. So you're saying over time that these little cracks could become, or very, very small cracks, tiny, tiny, very small cracks, right? We're talking microscopic. They're not microscopic, but... They, um, sh they should be near microscopic, a couple right. thousandths of an inch will eventually become bigger cracks and that could create failure. Yeah, you'll actually have a release of a part of that cream that you talked about right. from the surface. And eventually that'll become rough and porous. And then after it's porous, of course, that exacerbates itself further and you have further erosion. And so that's what we're worried about. Five years down the road, 10 years down the road versus the immediate. That is one issue. That is, that is one issue. That's what I believe most probably this is. And if that is it, then we are concerned only about long-term erosion of the surface of the slabs call it, causing erosion of the concrete itself. Which is a shame when you just spent half a billion dollars. <laughs> but, but at least it's not catastrophic. Pieces of this aren't going to go flying off. That is provided that that is what this is. And I right. have not, I've not been out there, I've not had my eyes on this thing. So most probably the cracks are cracks caused by the process of hydration because the concrete got too hot and cured too quickly. And most probably they do not offer a significant liability to the sluice way that's completed. Now we'll insert here, if I may, I've said this many, many times. The dam will not fail because of the bottom half of the sluiceway. And in fact, when they repaired the bottom half of the sluiceway, I reacted to that because it was inappropriate and unreasonable to repair the bottom half without repairing the gate structure and the upper half, which is really the part that would fail the dam. I don't understand that and I never got an answer that I felt was was responsible. But that's the situation we find ourselves in with Oroville. So what do you think would be the best course of action um, just for not repairing the upper part of the dam, but just for these surface cracks? What do you think the best uh, 
Now, what's the next step to make sure these, these that, cracks that, don't that's become a great bigger question. cracks? That is a great question. That's, that's the question, isn't it? The, there are a couple ways that these can be dealt with. One of them is with an overlay. Master Builders has some products that would work well, which is a Portland-based product that overlays this, kind of covers the surface, stops the permeation of the water down into these small, small fractures, and then this thing will last for a very, very long time. The other way is using an epoxy-based product. Uh, Sika has some products like that. Those are just two of many um, companies that manufacture products for concrete repairs and concrete. And the epoxy will actually seal the surface, adhere the cracks together. It has UV stabilizers in it, which it much have so that the epoxy doesn't break down itself and that surface then will be a much better surface for the spillway causing it to to continue for a much longer period without having those spalling and failures. I would suggest very highly that they do one of those two types of repairs to the surface of the concrete spillway so that they don't get that um, movement of water in and out of the, of the, the surface of that concrete that, that will cause failure eventually. All right. Well, folks, if you have any more questions, please comment below the video. And thanks very much. Thank you.